and Hibernate's able to map a wide variety of data types, everything from simple numeric types to strings, which can be mapped in a variety of ways using varchars, chars, nvarchars, uh, as well as string blobs and all the variety of types that databases support. Uh, it's able to map Booleans both to field bit fields using zeros and ones, uh, character fields that contain true, false, or T and F. There's a wide variety of ways of defining how that maps to the back end Boolean values in the database, but they can map, be mapped to true Boolean types in our .NET applications. We can handle the mapping of date times, both including and excluding time zone offsets, daylight savings time, and define how those simple date, what could be a simple date in the database, maps into either UTC or local time in the actual application. We can also map enumerations. We can map these to strings or to their underlying numeric values, however we choose. We're also able to map complex objects either into other tables through relationships, we'll be, which we'll be discussing in another module, or by embedding those types inside of another entity table, such as using components, which we'll be looking at in a few slides. We're also able to handle collections, so collections of objects through foreign key relationships, and allow us to specify how our object graph fits together. Let's look at how we can use Inhibernate to map some basic data types. We're creating a new customer and saving it to the database. This customer has a first name, a last name, points, gold status, those sorts of things. If we look at the actual customer, you can see that these properties are integers, booleans, date times, as well as a custom enumeration. The custom enumeration has a variety of different values that it can possibly have. Jumping over to the mapping file, you can see that each of the properties is listed out in the mapping file, as along with the primary key specified by the ID. And I don't have to specify types. When an hibernate parses the metadata, the hbm.xml files, when the application first loads, it reflectively looks at the classes and figures out the appropriate data types. Let's go ahead and build the application and run it. This is going to have the effect of saving a new customer into the database. If we come back over to program, you can see that we have simply created that new customer and saved that record. I'll jump over to SQL Management Studio and we'll see how these different properties are mapped into database columns. You can see that points is an integer. Gold status is a, is a bit field. It takes a zero or a one. Member since is a date time field and our credit rating is an NCAR 10. There's different ways that we could map these, but this is one possible mapping. If I come over to the actual database table and run a select query on it, you can see that John Doe has been saved into the database and he has a credit rating of one. All the other attributes are self-evident as to what they are, but this credit rating of one, why is that a credit rating of one? Let's come over to the customer, customer credit rating and you can see in .NET, excellent is the first one and in .NET, or in C Sharp as a matter of fact, the first enumeration value by default has is valued zero. Good is the second one, so it has a value of one. We could change these if we so wanted. Okay, with that in place, we can see that we can wrap things, uh, map things to the database. I'm actually going to go ahead and load the, the customer that we just saved back from the database. So I'm gonna say session dot uh, query over customer. And I'll say uh, list customer. So I've got a list back and I'm going to just take the first one.
and then I'm going to console write out the customer. Now, jumping over to the customer class, I've overridden the toString method so that it formats out all of those properties in an easy to see fashion. So let's go ahead and build this again, and I will run it. Out comes the user again, that customer, and you can see the credit rating is good. So mapping basic data types is quite straightforward. The one thing I should warn you about is these custom enumerations. They're stored underneath the covers. .NET stores enumerations by their integer value. And that's what's being saved to the database. The problem here is what happens if I add in a new customer credit rating. I say very good and I just insert it in. I'm gonna build that, run it, and when I display it, all of a sudden, the credit rating is going to be very good because now that has a value of one in our .NET code. So there's a disjoint between the two. So often it's very nice and preferable to store these enumeration values as their string representations, which tend to be more stable with, as our application evolves. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come over to our customer.hpm file. And here now I have to specify a type. I need to say type is customer credit rating type. Now you might be wondering where the customer credit rating type has come from. It's a class that I created that is derived from the enum string type of T, which ships within Hibernate. This specifies that you want to save that type into the database using the string value of, of the enum rather than the integer or numeric value. So we've got this string type. Let us go and reset the database. So I'm going to simply delete from customer to wipe out those records. Run the query again. We can see our database is empty. Let's come over to the program, uncomment out the create lines, and we'll comment out the query lines, we'll build our application and actually run it. So that type is now saved into the database. If we look at, we'll query it again, you'll see the credit rating is good. Coming over here and querying it back again, You can see our credit rating is good. Let's come over to our customer credit rating. And I'm going to now add in a very, very good. So changing the integer value of what good is, building it. And as you can imagine, if I run it again and load that entity in, because it's saved in the database using the value of good, regardless of what I do to that enumeration, that will remain stable, assuming that I don't rename one of the enumeration values. So as you can see, we can map a variety of data types, simple data types, including enumerations, to and from our database using in Hibernate.